Let's see if we can get the lighting any better. Nope, iPhone, you don't want to. That's okay. Oop, Lizzie. I look terrible. Hey guys, it's your girl Rachel, and today we are going to be learning something. Today's subject is art restitution. Now, before you say anything, I know it sounds like it's going to be a little bit dry, but I assure you, it is not. It is very interesting, it is very important, and it affects all of us, not only as Americans, but as humans living on this planet Earth. So, a little bit of background. In the late 1930s, going into the early 40s, when the Nazis came into power in Germany, Hitler wanted to create a cultural center in Linz, Austria, where all of the Germanic art would be, where it would really truly express his perfect culture. That's a garbage truck. I'll wait for it to go. It's a bus, that's why. Anyway, so to get all this artwork, and since he was already marginalizing Jews, he was like, Hey, you know what would be cool? Let's go steal some art from the Jews, but you know what? Let's make it legal under our new system and make a law and immediately just wipe out everything. Like artwork. Paintings, sculptures, silverware, the works. Let's just all take it, bruh. And then all of his Nazi soldiers were like, Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good idea, bro. Let's do it. So starting in 1938, they decided to steal all the artwork from the Jews. Hitler wanted to create the Führer Museum in Linz, Austria, where he could display all of his Germanic artwork. And anything he didn't agree with, say Picasso, Van Gogh, anything that didn't accurately depict humankind in the way that Hitler wanted, ended up in the Degenerate Art Museum. Over the course of about 12 years in Germany, the Nazis ended up stealing almost 100 thousand pieces of individual art. That's absolutely astonishing. But now we're going to talk about one piece in particular, Trois Dancieuses on Boost by Edgar Degas. So first, a little bit of background. Cue music. Hilaire Germain Edgar Degas was born in Paris in 1834 to Celestine Mousson, a Creole American immigrant, and Augustine Degas, a banker. Degas began his schooling at age 11, enrolling in the Lycée Louis Le Grand, a prestigious boys' secondary boarding school. However, when he was 13, his mother died, and his father had to become Edgar's main influence in life and in art. In 1856, the artist went to Italy and settled in Rome for three years. He admired early Christian and medieval masterpieces of Italy, as well as frescoes, panel paintings, and drawings of the Renaissance masters. When he moved back to Paris, he started a studio where he could focus on the human figure. Some of his early paintings, such as the Bellelli family and a cotton office in New Orleans, were very realistic in nature. It wasn't until after his service in the Franco-Prussian War that he started his most famous works. In 1874, he joined a group of artists in Paris called the Impressionists, who painted truthful portrayals of society. While he disliked the term Impressionism, he joined the ranks of famous painters of the genre such as Manet and Renoir. During this time, he found his muses. Degas loved the ballet, not as an art form, but as a way to exhibit his voyeurism. Instead of portraying beautiful choreography, he displayed the harsh realities of dancing. Joints cracking, bloodied, painful feet inside of point shoes, and the stressful nature of the dance studios and rehearsal rooms. The female figure, especially the ballerina, has been the subject of an estimated 100 paintings and 300 pastels. He is widely considered one of the paramount impressionists of the late 19th century. Now that you know a little bit about my boy Edgar, now we're going to talk about the case. Dun dun dun! So, Trois Dancieuses on Boost belonged to a doctor named Maurice Dreyfus, and he was a Jewish art collector. On August 28, 1940, the Nazis seized his home. It was two officers and one Nazi civilian, and they took the Degas and two Rayburn pastels. Why would you do that to somebody? And they were handed over to the ERR and eventually taken to the Jeux de Palme after staying at the German embassy. And the Degas 
It wasn't seen again until 11 years later in 1951 after the war had ended. A bunch of French people were checking out the German embassy, cleaning it up because it was in ruin. The Nazis were out of power. And they looked in a stock closet and saw the charcoal, the Degas. And after it was discovered, did they find Maurice Dreyfus? No, they gave it to the Louvre. And Monsieur Dreyfus, he died six years later in 1957, never to even know that the piece had been found again. He died without telling his children. He died without making a claim. Now here's the cool part. The French government recently has taken steps to reunite families with the stolen artwork. And because direct witnesses of these art crimes are dwindling as time goes on because they happened almost 70 years ago, there aren't many people who are like, hey, you stole that from my dad and I watched you. So the Ministry of Culture in France has taken it into their own hands to hire teams of genealogists to reunite these paintings with their original owners. So by doing this, they look down the family tree and they find the rightful heirs to these pieces and try to get in contact with them. And here's the cool part, none of them have to make a claim. So you could just be going about your daily business and get an email or a phone call from the French Ministry of Culture. Hello, is this Vivian Dreyfus? Yes, it is. Who is this? This is Papa from the French Ministry of Culture. We found a Degas that belonged to your father during World War II and it was looted by the Nazis. Oh, I didn't even know that existed. Well, it does. And it's yours. What? So that's what happened. On May 10th, 2016, Vivian Dreyfus, the only living heir of Maurice Dreyfus, got the Degas returned to her. And that was only last year. This is a completely new process. Since last year, over 27 pieces have been returned to their rightful owners, including a 16th century painting being returned to the grandchildren of its original owner in December 2016. That was only five months ago. And the French Ministry of Culture is very optimistic. They are hoping to return thousands and thousands of pieces to the heirs of the owners that may not know that they even exist. Humans can be pretty great sometimes, but where's Twas Dancers on Boost right now? Well, sadly, Vivienne didn't want to keep it, but good news is she made a little money off of it. In July of 2016, the sketch was sold at the Alcenat Auction House in France for I gotta look at this because this number is big. It was sold in Fontainebleau for 462,500 euros, which would be the equivalent of $688,000 in US currency. And I mean, why wouldn't it? It's a beautiful painting. It has so much cultural significance, not just to the French people, but to dancers as well, because it shows accurate depictions of what we go through, even though they were made in the late 1800s. Oh well, but enough of the sappy stuff. Let's get back to the point. So the point is, this works. The French Ministry of Culture is doing an incredible, incredible job with returning these pieces to their owners. And it's only a matter of time before thousands and thousands of pieces are returned without making a claim. And since 28 pieces have already been returned in 2016 alone, this is very, very promising. That cuts down to about two and a half pieces a month. And hopefully, this will help to right the wrongs of the Nazis who committed horrendous crimes against Jews all those years ago. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed that little bit of education to get your day going. Okay, have a good day. See you later. Bye.